grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, October 9th, 2022. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you, Lord. We thank you for another day, another opportunity, Lord God, to live under your grace, to see your miraculous power working out in our lives. Father, to come to you and just thank you once again for being our protector, our shield, our buckler, our strong tower. Father, we thank you for all of these mercies and grace. Lord, we come to you and ask you for your forgiveness, washing and cleansing, so that we can go into worship pure-hearted, Lord, ready to hear from you, ready to absorb your word, ready to have it change our lives. Speak to us, Lord God. Have your way. We give you this day as well as our lives in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, or Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb.org or you can catch us for updates on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. See you there. Scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We're reading Matthew's Gospel, the 8th chapter. We're reading from the English Standard Version, Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The text for today's message is taken from the book of Leviticus, the Old Testament. Leviticus, we're looking at the 27th chapter, and we're taking just a portion of one verse, verse 28. Leviticus, chapter 27, a portion of verse 28. Listen to what it says. Every devoted thing is most holy to the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord God, because we're in this place to hear you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that we are here to acknowledge your presence. We're here to acknowledge that you speak to us. Father, we thank you for being intimate enough that you speak to us individually. Father, you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. So you know who we are. You know how we live. You know what we're going through. You know, Lord God, that we want to be a blessing. Father, we come before you now. Open our ears. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive this word that you have for us. Change us from the inside out. Lord, send down that anointing. It makes teaching easy and it makes understanding easy even easier. Father, we'll remember to give you all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Yes, everything devoted, wow, is most holy. Every devoted thing to the Lord, 
he says, is most holy. We just finished the holiday of Yom Kippur, and that was just observed last week. And it is the most holy day in the Jewish calendar, praise God. The idea of atonement, that's what it is, the day of atonement. The idea of the atonement is to pay for your sin debt. Yes, you have a debt upon you called sin. And in this uh, in this holiday, you can go back and you can read all of Leviticus and Exodus and see what God has to say about this, this incredible holiday. A lamb was sacrificed and a goat became the scapegoat and set loose with the sins of the people into the wilderness. Yes, every single year. And so now we look at that atonement and we see with sin out of the way, that's what this is all about, getting sin out of the way, it enables an individual to have full devotion to God. That's what the purpose is of the atonement, huh? is to bring this most holy day so that you can get rid of your issues, so that you can devote yourself fully to God. You remember the Ark of the Covenant? Well, what was that all about? With the mercy seat on top and the people carrying it and, and all of these things. This was to experience God's most holy things. Yes, this was about experiencing the most holy. Amen. When the people got close, when the people uh, uh, had any dealings, even with the enemy or any situations or just praying, they experienced holiness. That's what the ark was all about. The most holy. He says those things that are devoted, they'll be most holy to God. Most holy. Uh, the, the Hebrew said, Kodesh Kadashim. Uh, most holy means that, listen, most, the word most means exceeds all. And praise God. When you have the most, that means you're exceeding everything else. And then if you're talking about holiness, you're talking about that which is unique. That's what holy is. Yeah. Holy means that none compares. <laughs> praise God. Holy means that it stands alone. Wow. It stands out. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Holiness is when you're outstanding. Yes. So when you're the most holy, watch this, you exceed even outstanding. You're above outstanding. Wow. I mean, outstanding is already cool, but imagine exceeding outstanding. God wants us to have this most holy experience. You need a title for today's message. It's a most holy quest. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. We're on a quest to get the most holy experience. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's what I want. Listen, let's be honest. Don't you want outstanding experiences? Remember, we spoke about holiness, and that's really being outstanding, right? Unique. Don't you want those outstanding experiences? Well, if you're saying yes, pastor, then you're on a quest for the most holy. <laughs> Amen. And you might say, well, well, what is that? What is it? The most holy. Well, what is that? Well, somebody, uh, one of my friends described it this way. It's the sweet spot. Praise God. What do you mean by that? Well, it's where you get blessed to overflow. Yeah. When, when you have overflowing blessings, and then, watch this, then because you're overflowing, you become a blessing. Wow. Talk about most holy experiences. That's what that is. It's going from being blessed to being a blesser. Now, how do you, how do, you do that, Pastor? I want to know how to do that. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to define what most holy is. This way you can experience it on a daily basis. What is most holy? Now, well, first and foremost, most holy is close to him. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, drawing close to God. 
in Numbers chapter uh, 16 and verse 5, this is what the Lord said at, through, through Moses. In the morning, the Lord will show who belongs to him and who is holy. And he will have that person, watch this, come near him. Wow. Yeah. Holiness is drawing close to him. Remember David? David had victory after victory, David the king, the one who defeated Goliath. And, and David said it this way when he was talking about war and talking about battles and talking about experiencing the most holy situations. Watch this. David said, one thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I can dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then he said this, to behold the beauty of the Lord, watch this, and to inquire in his temple. Yeah, to inquire. That's really cool. David was saying, you know, I want to draw so close to him that I'll get answers. Amen. Yeah. Listen, everyone wants answers. Huh? What, what, what do you think you're listening to this message for? What do you think we go to psychiatrists and therapists and what do you think we go to counselors for? What do you think? Huh? We go to prayer for. We want answers to life's situations. Well, look, the answers are found. David said it. He gave us a clue. Close to him. That's where you pick up the most holy experience. Everyone wants answers. And close to him is the place for intimate answers. What is the most holy experience? Outstanding experiences. Outstanding, in other words, outside the norm. <laughs> Amen. A holy, a most holy experience, when you get close to him, you get those knockout experiences. Wow, they're crazy experiences that only can be attributed to him because he is most holy. This, uh, this verse in number 16, this was a story where there was a rebellion in the wilderness and, and Korah and his gang came against uh, Moses and Aaron and started talking about them and said, hey, look, you know, we're priests too. Why don't we, we're going to take over. And, and, you know, Moses was really cool. He was like, well, let me go and draw close to God first. <laughs> let me go and speak to him first. And then Moses went in and spoke to God and said, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take over everything. And this guy, Korah, and his buddies, they want to take over and lead the people. So what, what do you think I should do? And this is what God said. Let, let me show you what's most holy to me and who is holy to me. I'll have that individual draw near. Yeah. I'll make that person most holy holy. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And, and listen, remember we were talking about most holy experiences. How often do you experience the earth opening up and swallowing up the individual that's trying to curse you? Wow. That's what happened in that story. Look, go back and read number 16. Crazy story. Yeah. The earth opened up and swallowed up Korah and the rest of his gang. Yeah, Korah was on one side, Moses on the other with Aaron. Look, if you want to see incredible, most holy experiences, get close to him. Draw close to him in prayer. Amen. Draw close to him. That's what Moses did. Every time Moses was confronted with something, he ran to God. Huh? And look, we're not talking about being perfect, okay? We're not talking about you picking up the holiness and walking off, you know, as though you're holier than thou. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having the most holy experiences on a daily basis. Uh, let me give you an example. Just like being in a garage, right? If you're in a garage, it doesn't make you a car. <laughs> well, being in a church doesn't make you holy. Let me say that again. Just like being in a garage doesn't make you a car, being in a church does not make you holy. You know what makes you holy? Watch this. Being close to him. That's when you get to experience what most holy is all about. Moses. Remember Moses? Remember he had the burning bush situation, right? Well, if you go and you keep on reading the story and everything, it's very interesting. You'll notice something about Moses. 
at 80 years old. He kept climbing the mountain. <laughs> Up and down and up 80 years old. This wasn't a workout. What was he up to? Why was Moses, this old man, climbing up and down the mountain continuously? Here's your answer. You ready? To experience the most holy. Yeah, that's, that's the only reason why he did it. He did it to get in the presence of God. Amen. Are you doing that? Are you, do you want to experience what most holy is all about? Those outstanding times where it's only God doing it in and through you? Well, you might say, yeah, but, but, but pastor, let's be honest. I don't always feel close to him. You know? Well, he alleviates that problem. You know how he does it? He fills you with his spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He just puts his Holy Spirit in you. So guess what? There's always the paracletus. There's always the comforter. There's always that one who is inside of you and walking with you and talking to you. He draws close to you if you will draw close to him. Hey, if you don't feel close to him, you know what you should do? Pray. And you know what he'll do? Ask for forgiveness, right? And he'll atone. Remember, we talked about that. And when he atones, he pays for your sin. And guess what? Gives you the opportunity to devote yourself back to him again. That's what God wants. He wants you to redevote yourself to him. Praise God. That's what it's all about. Look, what is most holy? Most holy is close to him. Here's another thing most holy is. Most holy is sacrificed to him. <laughs> That's what it is. It's not just close to him, it's sacrificed to him. In Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 30, listen to what it says. God is talking to the people. This annual, by the way, Exodus 30, verse 10. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for the generations to come. And watch this, look what he says. It is most holy to the Lord. Wow. Anything sacrificed to him. Look, anything drawing close to him, most holy. Anything sacrificed to him, most holy. Praise God. Bill, what are you trying to say? Simple. No atonement without a cost. Let me say that again. There is no atonement. Remember, the atonement is a payment for your sins. Atonement. There's no atonement without a cost. There's no atonement without a sacrifice. That's what he said. The atoning sin offering. And look, let's be honest. A sacrifice is a cost. Hello. That's what a sacrifice is. A sacrifice is a cost. Huh? There's no free lunch. You experience the most holy when you make a sacrifice to him. Yeah. Is there anything, and we spoke about this a couple of weeks back, is there anything that you can't give him? Is there anything that you can't let go of for him? You know, he gave his life for us. Is there anything that we could do in showing how we feel about him? Remember, anything sacrificed to him is most holy. That's another experience. Look, Jesus, right, is the most holy one. Why? Because he gave his life. <laughs> he paid the ultimate cost. He paid the ultimate price. Look, remember, holy means set apart. It's unique. Nothing like, nothing like for God's use. It's set apart for God's use. That's what holy is, right? So when you're most holy and you're dealing with a most holy experience, you're giving it all to God. You're saying, Lord, I'm giving you this one. I, I'm not in charge of this. And it becomes most holy. You want most holy in your marriage? Give your marriage to the Lord. You want most holy out of your job. <laughs> Amen. That great experience, that outstanding experience. Sacrifice it. Give it to God. You want the most holy for your children. Give it to God. You want the most holy for your finances. Give it to God. Set apart for God's use. When you go into Exodus chapter 30, this is verse 10. Go into verse 29 and, and, and you'll see something. It says that anything touching the most holy actually becomes holy. Yeah. When you sacrifice your life to him, when you give your life to him, huh? anyone you impact, 
amen, gets touched by your holiness. Praise God. Anyone that you, 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 you go around gets influenced by God in you. Look, most holy is what's sacrificed to him. So you might say, okay, well then, what, 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 I'm ready, pastor, but what do I sacrifice? What should I sacrifice to him? It's simple. Three things that you have. Your time, your talent, and your treasure. <laughs> Those are the three things you have. Hey, look, you have 24 hours? How much are you giving to the Lord? Huh? How much are you sacrifice? It's a big sacrifice. Look, I, 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 I work, you know, 10 hours a day. I don't have any time. Well, you know something? Then don't cry when you don't have an extra day. Huh? God gives you day after day. And what things, what gifts, what talents has he given to you and blessed you with? Uh, have you given those to the Lord? Huh? Uh, how much, uh, you know, are you able to uh, gain in terms of uh, income? Well, are you showing God how much you are involved in being a blessing to others with what he's blessed you with? Your time, your talent, your treasure. Paul said it this way. He said this in, in Romans uh, chapter 12. He said, becoming a living sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a living sacrifice. Because that's where you'll experience the most. <laughs> the most holy. Now, look, we were talking about this before, right? What is it to be most holy? Most holy is close to him. Most holy is sacrificed to him. What else is most holy? How do I get another, the, the most holy experience out of my life? The most holy is hearing him. Yeah. Are you hearing what he has to say? Jude writes his letter to the church towards the end of the Bible. Jude chapter one, verse 20. Listen to what Jude says. Building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's what we should be doing building ourselves up. How do we do it? Faith. But not just faith. Faith, which becomes most holy. Yeah. More faith you have, more holiness. Wow. You know, and how do, how do we know this? It's simple. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So faith is what pleases him. Let me say that again. Faith is what pleases him. How do we get faith? Hearing him. Yeah. Faith is moving on what he has to say. Let me say that again. Faith is moving on what he has to say. So you have to hear him. First commandment to Israel. Hear Israel. Hear me. Hear me loud and clear. Listen, because when you can hear him, then you could follow. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, Paul said. And hearing comes by the word of God. You want to experience the most holy then get into the faith realm. Yeah, faith. That's how you please God. You want to see how to make God upset? Just ignore him. <laughs> That's the opposite of faith. Huh? Ignore him. How do you ignore him? Just doubt him. Because huh? faith believes him and what he's saying. And doubt is disbelief. Yeah, it's the opposite of faith. And so you're saying, God, I hear what you're saying, but forget about it. No way. Yet you don't move on it. God tells you to do something, even either through the Bible or, th or through prayer or through, uh, uh, you know, when you're fasting and you're hearing from him by a dream or a vision and, and you just don't move on it. Yeah, that, that really upsets God. Huh? You know what makes God happy? When you hear from him and then you move on what he has to say. You become most holy. Watch this. You get that most holy holy experience. You know what was most holy to Peter? He walked on water based on one word. God said to him, Jesus said, come. And he moved on it and stepped out of the boat and he stepped into a most holy experience. Remember the scripture lesson that we just finished reading in Matthew chapter eight? Listen to what the, so, the, the centurion said. Jesus said, I'm, I'm gonna come to your house. I'll, I'll heal your servant, right? And by the way, the centurion was not Jewish. He was a Roman centurion. So he turns around and, and listen to what the centurion says to him. I just want to hear you say it. Yeah. When, when it comes to healing, I just want to hear you say he's healed. And it's good for me. Yeah. 
I just want to hear you. That is where he stepped into the most holy experience because you know what happened? His servant got healed immediately before he could even get home. He was on his way home and, and they came rushing to him and said, hey, you know, the, the word that, he, that the master spoke, it worked because he's healed. Amen. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, which is the faith hall of fame, you'll, you'll notice something. It's just a sample. Go, go back and read Hebrews 11. It's just a sample of what, what most holy and what most holy experiences can accomplish in flawed folks. You know, people with problems, people that are imperfect. Yeah, go back and read it. All those people you read about in Hebrews 11, hello, they're not perfect. Guess what? You're not perfect. Guess what? I'm not perfect. Folks like us can accomplish incredible things and have incredible experiences in faith if we'll just hear him. And be, watch this, when we hear him, most holy experiences come. What are you talking about, Pastor? It's simple. Walking in faith is that level of devotion. Remember we talked about devotion? It's that level of devotion that lets you experience the most holy. Look, if you're devoted to God, you hear what he has to say. <laughs> Amen. Are you hearing him today? And if you're hearing him, are you entering into the realm of the most holy by moving on what he has to say? Think about it. You can experience this. Let's get your takeaway point. Here's the takeaway point. Seek God diligently and you'll have the most holy experiences on a daily basis. Hey, man, look, you don't believe me? Try it. Seek God diligently. And I guarantee you, you'll have the most holy experiences on a daily basis. Seek after him. Look to hear from him. Draw close to him. Sacrifice to him. You'll see. I can guarantee. Now, what do you mean by the most holy experiences, Pastor? Look, you'll experience things like confidence. Like things like peace that passes all understanding. You'll experience the fruits of the Spirit. You'll experience healing, supernatural. You'll experience forgiveness and how to forgive people. You'll experience victory. That's most holy on a daily basis. So what else should we do? Let's finish up. Bottom line. All this culminates in worshiping him. Amen. Most holy is to worship him. I like what David says in Psalm 96. Psalm 96 in verse 9, he says this, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. David says, wow, when you get into worshiping, you start dealing with holiness. And then when you deal with holiness, watch this, you deal with beauty. He says the beauty, the beauty of holiness. Wow. Look, people say have a beautiful day, right? You really want a beautiful day? Step into the most holy experiences. How do you do that, pastor? Start worshiping him. Have you ever been in an ugly place? Have you ever felt ugly? Just, you know, you just look at yourself in your life and you say, no, this is terrible. Well, look, Worship brings out beauty. <laughs> Amen. Worship brings out, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship brings out beauty. And, and you know, worship, what is worship? It's when you acknowledge that he is holy. He's special. He's unique. He's outstanding. Remember the scripture lesson this morning? And Look at the, the centurion, right? He understood what worship was all about. He acknowledged how special Jesus was, how unique Jesus was, how outstanding Jesus was. And that's why he came to Jesus for the healing of someone else, not even himself. Yeah, you'll experience this on a daily basis. Remember what he said? You know, when you understand that you're, that you're worshiping, right? Like that centurion. Listen to what he said. I'm not worthy that you should step under my roof. 
I'm not worthy. And that's when he experienced the most holy of experiences, the healing of his servant. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter six, remember Isaiah was in the temple and he was worshiping God and something incredible happened and he experienced it. Remember, all of a sudden the angels popped up. He was worshiping when he heard and he had the most holy experience. Remember, the angels popped up and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Three times holy. Listen, you know what that is? <laughs> Three times holy? That's the most holy. Praise God. He is the most holy. When you draw near to him and when you worship him and when you hear him and when you give to him, you're going to experience incredible things in the spirit. You'll be experiencing the most holy on a daily basis. My friends, do you need the peace of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus? I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and thank you for your holiness and kindness. And Lord, we want to draw near to you and we want to experience what's most holy. Go with us this week, Lord. We thank you for your word. Help us to walk out in faith and so that we can experience what's most holy every day. Protect us, Lord God, from things seen and unseen on every side till we come back to meet you again in worship. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said, amen. Remember, John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed.